Today, my job is to convince you to cook lots of chicken in water that ends up turning out whitish gray looking. By cooking chicken in water, I mean poaching it in a pot, or if you have one, using a sous vide immersion circulator. The benefits of using these methods are number one, moister chicken. Number two, it's lower calorie as no added fat is necessary to cook them. Number three, they are hard to f up. And number four, it's perfect for making a large batch ahead of time to turn into many dishes throughout the week. Chicken is a fairly healthy and inexpensive protein, so learning about these different ways to cook it really helps open up the options of what you can do with it. And today I'm going to cover the basics of both cooking methods and then show you three dishes that I made with the resulting chicken later in the week. Let's start with poaching first as it requires less equipment and less time than sous vide. As described by Michael Ruhlman, poaching is best accomplished between 160 degrees Fahrenheit and 180 degrees Fahrenheit, which is below simmering that happens at 190 degrees Fahrenheit. So even if you don't have a thermometer, just bring the liquid to a simmer and then back it off until there aren't bubbles and you'll be in business. To do this, first fill a pot with enough water to cover the chicken. Once filled, place the pot over a burner on medium low heat to warm it up. And I'm attaching here a little thermometer that clips on the side of my pot, but again, not necessary. It just makes it way easier if you have one. Now, very important here, we do need to cook this in a seasoned poaching liquid. Just like a wet brine or salt in your pasta water, seasoning your poaching liquid will diffuse flavor into the chicken. Today I'll be using plain water with two large four finger pinches of salt and two bay leaves, but you can do the same exact thing with chicken stock or better than bouillon to make a tasty liquid. I purposely like to keep the chicken fairly plain of add-ons so I can use it for just about anything once it's done, but feel free to add any spices or aromatics that you want to. As a general rule, warm up the liquid and taste it before adding the chicken. It should taste well seasoned and salty. If it doesn't really taste like anything here, the chicken is not going to taste like anything either, though you can always season after it's shredded if you would like. Once the water is just below a simmer at around 170 or 175 degrees Fahrenheit, add the chicken thighs and let cook until it hits an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is a really low stress cooking method and it's actually hard to overcook since the heat of the water is not much higher than what we want the chicken to be. Now I'm using boneless skinless chicken thighs here because I much prefer the slightly higher fat content which will allow us to crisp them up later compared to breasts but you could do skin on or any combination of chicken will work here. Once the chicken is done, pull it out and let it cool a bit before shredding, leaving it as is or chopping it into cubes. The shredded chicken comes out super tender. Once shredded, just give this a taste and add a little bit of salt if needed. Now, I know this looks pretty lame now, but I'll show you what we can do with it just in a bit. But first, let's talk about that immersion circulator. Now, sous vide is much the same concept, except it is typically done at lower temperatures and for a longer time. Secondly, the food is first put into a bag before adding it to the warm water bath that will cook the food. Now, to do this at home, you need something like an immersion circulator to warm and circulate that water. The main benefits of sous vide are it's more hands off and doesn't require the use of a burner as you can just kind of let it go on the counter. And it's also easier to dial in the exact temperature you would like your chicken and thus the texture of it to be. Also, in my experience, the seasoning you add is more concentrated since it's not being diluted in water like poaching is. To do this, first set up the sous vide machine to your desired temperature. I'm using 165 degrees Fahrenheit for these chicken thighs for four hours. Cirrus Eats has a great guide on sous vide chicken if you wanna check it out. But while that water is heating up, you're gonna place the chicken on a plate and season it with plenty of salt and black pepper. I'm using bone-in skin on chicken thighs this time. And again, I'm keeping this fairly plain, but feel free to add any spices or aromatics that you want to at this stage. I did decide to add some lemon zest at the end for some of those citrusy notes. Add the seasoned chicken to a vacuum seal, or in my case, a food safe freezer bag, and then close the back about three quarters of the way. Slowly drop the bag into the pot just above the water line, which will expel the air out and then zip it tight. Mm -hmm. 
I also like placing a clothespin on the side, attaching the bag so it doesn't move around and make sure it stays below that water, and then just let the chicken cook for about four hours. During this time, the chicken is gently cooked and becomes tender without any chance of accidentally overcooking it. After four hours, the chicken comes out of the bag looking mighty gray and frankly unappealing, but this can be easily fixed by searing it in a cast iron. What I like to do is just keep these in the bag and toss them in the fridge until I'm ready to use them. Now the main benefit of these water cooking methods over something like pan searing is really just moisture retention and ease of cooking. When we hear the sizzle of meat on a pan, that's water escaping from the food, aka we're losing juiciness. And with these cooking methods though, that liquid isn't going to be lost into the air. Also, by slowly bringing the temperature up to 165 or whatever your target temperature is, there's little chance of overcooking and that intramuscular fat will render as well. Also, as I mentioned earlier, there is no need to add fat like oil or mayo when crisping up even a skin on piece, so it is a lower calorie cooking method. A 100 gram or 3.5 ounce serving of the shredded chicken thighs without skin comes at 175 calories and 24 grams of protein, while the skin on piece is 227 calories and 23 grams of protein. Now here's the fun part. Let's go over my fourth claim that this chicken can be used for just about anything. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you this whitish gray chicken is amazing on its own. I mean, I have no qualms about sneaking a handful of the shredded stuff from the fridge if I need a quick protein bump, but let's be real. It's plain salted chicken that lacks texture, browning, and interesting flavors, so let's change that. First up, our chilaquiles verde with chicken on top. To start, grab out 100 grams of the shredded chicken and just toss it on the hot cast iron to brown up. Once cooked up, set the chicken inside, and next pour some leftover salsa verde into a pan, along with some chicken stock, and just bring this up to a simmer until it is nice and thick. Once thickened, add in two servings, or 56 grams, of tortilla chips, and toss until the sauce coats them and they have just started to soften. Pour the chilaquiles onto a plate and top with the crisped up chicken, crema, cotija cheese, pickled onions, or cilantro, and just go to town on these things. This plate clocks in at 575 calories and 35 grams of protein. Next, let's make something low carb and higher protein. To start, cut up some baby broccoli into chunks and slice three cloves of garlic very thin. Now, place a frying pan or wok over high heat and add about a tablespoon or 15 grams of oil. Once hot, add the garlic and broccoli along with a little pinch of salt, 30 cranks of black pepper, and then just stir fry everything for a few minutes. Then before adding the chicken, add about another tablespoon or 15 grams of oil, and then we're gonna to toss in seven ounces or 200 grams of the chicken and cook for another three to five minutes until the components have started to brown. I also add a nice pinch or two of MSG while stir frying here. Lastly, turn off the heat and at this stage, add whatever you want to, but I stirred in a spoonful of chili garlic sauce and then a capful of rice wine vinegar to round it out. Serve this chicken on a plate and hit it with some sesame seeds. And now this can be served with rice or a number of ways, but I typically just eat a massive plate of the stuff as is. This whole plate clocks in at 692 calories and 56 grams of protein. Lastly, let's get our sandwich fix with a little freestyle chicken salad. So for this one, I use the sous vide chicken and I just remove the bone from it. Place the chicken skin side down on a hot cast iron and press it into it to make sure we get some nice browning on that skin. The natural fat in the skin will render and crisp on its own, so there's really no reason to add extra oil. Once the chicken is nice and brown and crisped up, fork don't lie, just chop it into cubes.
To assemble in a bowl, add four ounces or 113 grams of the chicken, a little bit of chopped carrots and celery, along with some diced up pickled onions. Next, add 15 grams of mayo, five grams of mustard, 10 cranks of black pepper, a touch of salt, and a half cap of rice wine vinegar before mixing and tasting. Last minute, I did decide to toss in some garlic powder and smoked paprika. To assemble, toss all of this on a toasted brioche bun, making sure you clean the plate a little bit because I overstuffed it. And then using a micrograter, add 14 grams of cheddar cheese, which will be used for melting. Top the sandwich up with a top bun and then toss onto the hot cast iron for more toasting purposes. Now, I must say these are toasted to perfection for me. And lastly, open up that bun and add a smattering of thinly sliced lettuce and two slices of tomato before savagely devouring. This one is 606 calories and 36 grams of protein. Now, all three of these recipes take less than 20 minutes and are all across the flavor spectrum, even though they all stem from the same basic cooking process, which is cooking chicken in water. So if I'm making a single piece of chicken for like a grilled chicken sandwich or a burrito, I'm probably not gonna sous vide or poach it. However, if I do have a busy week ahead of me that I wanna cook multiple pieces of chicken that I then can turn into many dishes throughout the week, sous vide or poaching is definitely gonna be the method that I think you should use. It's definitely important and this dish right here actually inspired this entire video. Two days ago, I was like, ooh, I wanna make some chilaquiles verde with chicken. I was like, all right, I gotta poach chicken. And then right as I was about to do that, I was like, man, I should probably make a video about this because I don't do this all the time, but it is definitely a useful technique to know. So two days later, I have my chilaquiles verde. I'm going to dive into this. Drop me a like and subscribe if you guys enjoyed the video, if you learned a little something, but that will wrap it up for me. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.